Well, what is special about working with prostate cancer patients is to know that this is a, a condition that uh, does impact men greatly, that can impact aspects of their lives, their quality of life, and to be able to have the opportunity to care for these men and keep them alive and see that they can continue to have uh, important life activities that they can continue with is a special thing for me. With respect to prostate cancer, it is a prevalent condition, but it can affect some populations disproportionately. I mean, what do you do? PSA testing is still done. Let that at least be your initial screener. And if that seems to be out of range, then that uh, would prompt further evaluation afterwards. Well, the PSMA scan has represented a true advance in our field. Uh, what it offers is a technique now for us to determine the extent of disease. But what's unique about it now is it takes us a step farther than where we had been in the past. This now images soft tissue where prostate cancer can progress to the soft tissues in the body and pick this up better than any other scans that we've had in the past. A remarkable technique to help us determine whether the prostate cancer is progressing in the body. Today, I have the great pleasure of doing an interview with uh, one of my patients, Ronald. Uh, who uh, had been diagnosed with prostate cancer, uh, came to see me, and we were able to initiate treatment, and he's done very well now. He's a prostate cancer survivor, has a very full life, uh, again, continuing on, which is the important story to tell. The story to tell about any prostate cancer survivor is you want to be alive, living life to the fullest, being there for the families, and continuing on <laughs> with a long life ahead of them. And Ronald, thank you for being here. We are delighted to have you, and we Look forward to what you're about to share with us about your life experience. Sounds good. All right. Thank you for having me. Delightful yes, to have indeed. you here. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Tell us about yourself and tell us about your interests, hobbies. Okay. Well, I'm from Baltimore. I taught Baltimore City Public Schools, music teacher. I'm married. I have one daughter. You know, so everybody's doing pretty well. You know, after the diagnosis with, you know, the cancer and you saving my life, you know, it was just... It's just great to be alive and to, to keep on moving forward. Well, how did you find out about your prostate cancer? Originally, my, my doctor would check my PSA. I can recall when it was, it went up to like nine, 9.0. And um, he asked me to go to see another doctor, uh, a urologist. He did all the tests, you know, you were talking about the finger, we did the, talking about the finger test, and then he ended up doing a biopsy, and he said that um, we're just gonna watch and wait. But two years later, a PSA was 26. And um, that's when it was time to uh, go see a, re a doctor to try to get this, this thing um, under control. One of your patients told me about you. We had the initial interview, and then you looked at everything and said, was I ready to have that operation? Because he said, this is serious, and you need to. It was a hurting feeling. I was scared. I didn't, you know, I know that as, you know, a lot of times, you know, black men and what have you won't get it checked, you know, won't um, deal with the process. But uh, I prayed. I just prayed, found that, through my meditation and prayer, felt I was gonna be healed, but I had to go through the process. So that is just what I wanted to do. I wanted to push forward, instead of, you know, being scared of the process, but, you know, if I wanted to be healed and enjoy life, I needed to have it done. And you said, <laughs> we met on one day, and he said, I have an opening tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to think real fast. I said, do I wanna live or do I wanna? I said, yeah, let's take it out tomorrow. So what types of tests were used uh, by your healthcare team to learn more about your prostate cancer and then to proceed? Like an MRI, I know I had that. You know, full body scans, I had a couple of those. And then the injection of some type of liquid to see if it had spread or what have you. And of course the x-ray. Yeah, we had the surgery and my PSA had gone up. It didn't go down, it went up, so that was scary. So your story is one where yeah, we did go to surgery to mm -hmm. remove the prostate, mm -hmm. but that wasn't enough to get it fully under control. True, true. You even did. I did the hormone treatment right. Every three months I would get a shot, had the radiation. I was on pills as well. I forgot about that. I was taking 
I don't remember what kind of pills they were, but I had to take pills as well as the um, injection. After we finished with the pills, you know, things started to work. The PSA was going down and things were working in place. It can break you down, but you just, I just kept meditating. I kept knowing I was gonna be healed. And as we got near the end, it was less treatments. So what questions did you ask the doctor? I mean, one of them, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and were there questions that uh, you wish you had asked that maybe then now in retrospect, just didn't mm. get addressed. I think you all did an excellent job, you know, kept me informed. I like to do my research, you know, when you tell me something or I would go and look it up or do what I needed to do to continue on with that process. I guess some of the questions were, um, you know, when you have your prostate taken out, then you're, um, you know, I'm married and you, you know, the sex part, <laughs> you know, your organs not working if you understand what I mean, you know, and um, that could um, cause problems in your relationship. And my wife was very, very supportive. And um, so we worked through all of that, you know, just in, in the know that, you know, you couldn't get an implant <laughs> and that could change some things. Everything's been going great. And you mm -hmm. talked about one thing here, which I think is an important, uh, discussion point mm -hmm. is that many men are concerned about getting treated for prostate cancer because it could impact a man's sexual function. Man, I tell you, I know some folks um, that have passed on and you hear stories, they just didn't want to do it because they wanted to keep having, you know, that sexual function. You know, you hear old guys, no, he ain't sticking up and up my butt, you know, and all that kind of stuff. I can actually recall that after dealing with what I was dealing with. Back then I had a couple uncles that were still alive and um, their friends were like, no, I'm not having that done and I'm not doing this. And then none of them around today. The so, you know, it's just something that's necessary. You know, as an African-American male as well, you know, we have a high rate of prostate cancer. And also too, I didn't know I had any cancer or anything. I couldn't feel anything any different than what I feel today. There were no symptoms or anything, but I had it. So you might think you're fine, and you can keep on going, but these are things that you have to get done. So that at times, you know, I feel like I, I play NFL football. I got a little, I get up and take a little time and all now and then, but hey, this is what you gotta do. And that's something that you said too as well when I think about it. You said surround yourself with, with good people, think positive thoughts, don't take in the negativity, you know, think positively. I, I try to remember that and to keep that because I guess it has to do with your body chemistry and what have you. To keep it positive, to think uplifting, you know, to think that you are gonna be healed and, and that, you know, and life just didn't end then. You know, it's really beginning. You did a great job, you saved my life. <laughs> they gotta get a check, you know, if, you, if you're watching this and if you're a male, take your health seriously. You know, stay positive as you say, stay around positive people. You sound like all good. Little of those secrets to know. That's yeah. How you, how you keep going. That's it. That's it. Well, Doc. All right. The Urology Care Foundation is the official foundation of the American Urological Association. Patient resources made possible by the generous support of Lanthius.